Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with the miserable liberal. Look at that. She's got a mug for holidays. Oh, you could get one hi, right Jimmy. down below. Yes. And uh, we can get one right here. Ron's here. You can hear him. You can't see him. Hey, howdy, Ron. howdy. Guess what? So we're, there's more sexual allegations. They're flying. Every day I wake up, there's a new guy. Uh, this time is Garrison Keeler. If you don't know who Garrison Keeler is, you're probably young uh, or don't <laughs> listen to <laughs> He he did a show called The Prairie Home Companion. He you know, he retired from that show in 2016. Did you know that? I did not know that. I did that. not know that either until this came out. Uh, so he gets accused of sexual harassment, but Garrison Keillor is not taking it laying down. Just like people forget Ryan Seacrest has been accused of sexual harassment. Uh, Brian Seacrest or Ryan Seacrest said, uh, "Nope, didn't do it. Sorry, she thinks that, but I'm not. I'm going to keep working. Thanks." And I don't know if you noticed, nobody said a damn thing about Ryan Seacrest. Has anybody said any? Have you seen anything? Anybody said Mm-mm. anything, Steph? No, uh, I, I, I have not. I saw one headline, and then it was just over. That's it. Mm-hmm. Ryan Seacrest said it's not a thing, and we're moving on. Isn't that wild? Mm-hmm. So Garrison Keeler gets fired. Well, here's the story. Keeler, who retired from a Prairie Home Companion in 2016 but continued producing the Writer's Almanac for syndication, confirmed his firing to the Associated Press, saying his removal was linked to, quote, a story that I think is more interesting and more complicated than the version Minnesota Public Radio heard. So he's in a pit. So these are, this is a tough... This is a tough spot for a guy, a lefty guy, to be accused of sexual harassment because what happened was the history of the world, we people uh, didn't listen to women when they complained. When they said that guys were doing this stuff, nobody listened. It was really hard for to get someone to listen. Look, look at Bill Cosby. He had to get like 40 women before we were like, hey, maybe there's something to this. So, what Garrison, so now it seems like. Um, there's been an overcorrection in a sense where now everybody's believed at face value uh, without a hearing or a due process, right? Which is antithetical to what a progressive believes, right? The progressives believe in due process, right, Ron? I, I think it's it's a hard line to draw, and I don't have the fix for it, but, you know, kind of like you're saying— we need to have a situation where people feel comfortable coming forward and they feel supported coming yes. forward. However, yes. people are also uh, due to, to a do- fair process. Right. So, you know, there's that line to draw. And, it, and it's not an easy, you know, it, it's not an easy line to toe. I mean, it, it's just not a, a simple situation we talked at all. About, you yes, know? I agree. And we talked about this on Old School last night with Cenk Uger. And, uh, well, I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, well, I think what you're really saying, Jimmy, is that there's time that you can always say, we're taking this person's taking a leave of absence until we do our final negotiation or investigation on this stuff. I mean, I think that's really what, you know, we see this all the time. If somebody, a police person, you know, is involved in something. They shoot someone, they don't fire them immediately without an investigation. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. That's a great point, Steph. That is a great point. So why do I, well, let's, let's read a little bit more of the story. He told the Star Tribune, this is Garrison Keillor, told the Star Tribune, The issue was an incident where he put his hand on a woman's bareback accidentally. There's okay. Let's get to the rest of it. He, this is Garrison Keillor talking. He says, I meant to pat her back as she told me about her unhappiness and her shirt was open. And my hand went up it about six inches. She recoiled. I apologized. So he claims it's a more interesting story, but that doesn't sound very interesting in the way he's telling it. I was going to say, that sounds like a pretty boring story. If he says it's interesting and complicated, that that sounds pretty uninteresting and not complicated. So what is he leaving out that's interesting and complicated, I wonder? Mm. And why is he playing this fucking semantical game? Why is he doing this? Isn't it weird? It's kind of weird. Yeah. It gets weirder. He then says... If I had a dollar for every woman who asked to take a selfie with me and who slipped an arm around me and let it drift down below the belt line, I'd have at least a hundred dollars. Now he's just bragging. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I was like, hey, I'm gonna like, tell you something. I'm a pretty sweet catch. A lot of ladies trying to get a pinch of this. <laughs> a lot of ladies trying to feel me up and down. <laughs> 
He says, I'd have at least $100. So this poetic irony of a... So this is poetic irony of a high order, but I'm just fine. So what he's saying is, no, this is the things that happen to me. This happens to me all the time. I've never done it to someone else. So that's why this is ironic. It happens to me all the time. Women put their hands on me in places that if I put on them, they would get in trouble. That's what it sounds like he's saying, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? That's yes, what... I agree. Yes. Okay. <laughs> why do you say it like that? Well, because um, the, there is a very different... Uh, there's a, there's a gender difference, certainly, that, you know, it, it's not typical for a woman to cop a feel. Right. As often as it is for a man to cop a feel. Right. That's, so that's all. That's why it's only 100 times for him. <laughs> and he's been doing this for 40 years. <laughs> well, that's why that's why he's bragging about it. And he's like, I'm just fine. Yeah, that's I'm why. Just, so. I'm just, that's why he said, I'm just fine. It's cool. So he goes, I had a good long run and I'm grateful for it and for everything else. Minnesota Public Radio said in a statement released shortly after Keeler's announcement that it decided to terminate his contracts and his private media companies after someone after someone who worked with him on a Prairie Home Companion came forward that the show he doesn't do anymore mm-hmm. came forward last month. Minnesota Public Radio said it hired lawyers to investigate the allegations, so they must have finished their investigation. Sounds like, and they concluded they needed to fire him. In a statement on his personal website, now here's where it gets controversial even more. In a statement on his personal website, Keeler apologized to, quote, all the poets who work, whose work I won't be reading on the radio, and to the people who will lose work on account of this. But, get this, he did not mention the woman who made the complaint. Nor did he apologize to her, right? Doesn't seem like he apologized to her. No. He recently penned, get this, now it gets even better, or or more interesting. He recently penned an op-ed after Leanne Tweeden accused Senator Al Franken of forcibly kissing her and groping her without her consent, saying the notion Franken should resign was absurd. Gets better. In an email to Minnesota Public Radio's new boss... Wednesday afternoon, that's not the new boss's name, that's when it happened, that's just bad sentence structure. (laughs) In an email Wednesday (laughs) afternoon to NPR's new boss, not in an email to NPR's new boss Wednesday afternoon. (laughs) It's all right. That's for that's just a little that's for Huff for the Huff Poets tip. That's a free writing tip. (laughs) Here here it is, here it comes. This is what he wrote to the new boss at NPR. Minnesota Public Radio, he said, I think the country is in the grip of a mania. The whole Franken business is an absurdity. And I wish someone would resist it, but I expect Minnesota Public Radio to look out for itself. And meanwhile, I feel awfully lucky to have hung on for so long. Now, Steph, to me, I have so many questions, and the first one, first one is, why is he, why is he walking away so easily if he doesn't? It doesn't seem like he he's buying the accusation against him or against Al Franken. So, when he says that there's a, a we're in the grip of a mania. Um. The guys who are resigning left and right, nobody has pushed back. Nobody. Nobody has said, I didn't do this, right? Uh, uh, Jordan Cheriton, but he didn't get fired for that. He got fired for something for something else. They didn't like what he was doing, mixing his businesses or something. But he did, So he didn't get fired for sexual misconduct. Uh, but everybody else just took it, like Charlie Rose. Okay, you got me. Matt Lauer, yep, you got me. Matt Lauer, it was quick, too. Like, uh, We found a button. Okay, I'm gonna... I'll, you know what? I'll quit. Thanks. Sorry, you found the button? All right, I'm done. Because <laughs> it was like that. Like, he didn't push back. It was just like, hey, Matt, did you know that there was a button? Oh, you found it. I'll quit. I'll quit. Thanks. <laughs> he just quit immediately. So these guys are just quitting immediately. No one's pushing back. And I would not frame that 
as a mania. As a mania. That you cannot talk about. This country's in the grip of a mania. Maybe this country needs to step back and look at how we interact with... So- you know, a superior should right. be appropriately behaving uh, with people that work below them or, you know, so, not on the same level so playing field. I want to say that I'll say two things real quick. If it's a if it's absurd that Franken should resign and we're in a mania. Um, why isn't Al Franken saying that? Why does Al Franken say uh, today I'm starting to re earn your trust? Well, if he didn't do anything and it's absurd why did he say he has to re-earn your trust? He said that the other mm-hmm. day. So why doesn't Al Franken say any of this stuff? Why doesn't he say, you know, we get caught in a mania. I didn't do this. That's a little crazy. Why doesn't he say the stuff that... Uh, so that's, that's what I don't get. I know Al Franken has the luxury of... he Nobody can fire him. That he had to have to first do an investigation, which they're doing. So maybe he's just waiting. Maybe he's just going, I'm not going to push back and try to say these women are lying because you can't because we've done that for so long. uh, Now we have to accept. So I'm accepting what they say, but he's hoping that there's an investigation that clears him. He must think it's going to clear him. Otherwise, he would just quit. Right. I would imagine. Yeah. So but why doesn't. Why doesn't Al Al Franken. Why doesn't Al Franken say any of this shit? And by the way, Garrison Keillor. If you really feel like we're in a mania and you're being effed over by Minnesota Public Radio, why don't you stand up and do something about it? Why don't you call a press conference? Why don't you stand up and say it has to end now? Why don't you do that? Why don't you call a press conference? That's what doesn't. So you're going to go away and say, oh, this is all bullshit, but I'll go away without a fucking fight. I'll let someone else fight this fight. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you know, because all those women that are accusing Charlie Rose, they're they're just on some mania right now about his nudity. Yeah, that, according no, they, to. I mean, I think they all admit it. I mean, I think exactly. But Charlie's- let me add one more thing as far as, you know, you're saying, why doesn't Al Franken come out and say something? You know, uh, Al Franken called, you know, pretty much was on board when Sarah Silverman said, you know, the Bernie Sanders people were booing at the convention that they were ridiculous. Ridiculous. So if if this is a ridiculous indictment against Al Franken, he has a duty to come forward and (laughs) And say say something. This is ridiculous. But he's not saying that. Isn't that weird that he's not saying that it's absurd, but Garrison Keillor will? Isn't that weird that Garrison Keillor, he says he's being He's implying all over the place that he's being he's a victim and that this isn't a real thing. Yet, why not just say it? That's that's what I don't get. I don't know. So uh, maybe he'll say something. But right now he's he's uh, leaving. He's creating more questions than he's answering. Right. Am I wrong about this? Ron, what do you think? Well, yeah, because he's not straight up saying, like, why didn't do this? Or he just said this is a mania, like almost as if like, well, we're supposed to continue to accept stuff like this passively. Right. If he did, in fact, do something. And it's like, well, that's that, the whole reason all of this is happening is because we've passively accepted unacceptable behavior for way too long in yes. the workplace and in society. So this is a response to all that that is long overdue. Right. Um, now people are still entitled to a fair process, but... That's why all this is happening. It's not a mania. It's it's a long overdue response. It sounds like he had a... It, by the way, it sounds like there was an investigation. It, they didn't fire him before they did one. It sounds like... Again, I, I, it sounds like they did an investigation, and the investigation's over. But it's weird that it would be one one accusation from one woman where if it so, went down the way he said it went down... I, it, there has to be more to the story than Garrison Keillor's letting out. Like, I that, think that, so, too. That's all I can... But he says it's more interesting and more complicated. Then he restates it. It sounds less interesting and less complicated. So there's more to this story than he's letting on, right? Well, I would... I mean, yeah, because it sounds completely not interesting. And I would just... It, like, if his story checks out, I would just, like, ask the woman myself. Like, I, I would yeah. bring her into it, and I'd be like, look... That was clearly an accident. Can we talk about this? Like, like I accidentally touched your back or whatever, you know, his side of the story is where, which it does sound weird, like six inches is a fair amount of space. I don't know. So like, yeah, I I still can't get a a picture. Yeah, like I can't visualize this. Like I can imagine if he put his hand around her back and she had a shirt that wasn't tucked in and his hand went up her shirt on her back. Why would that be? They're going to fire him. 
Yeah. That, that 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 so there had to be something else. Well, the six inch thing is. He said confusing. his hand went six inches up. Did, did he mean it went six inches down her pants or something? Or it, it had to can't it's just not, be what yeah. he. It, it it just it just sounds too crazy. If that's what happened, that it, that, that can't be it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I just it's interesting to hear Garrison Keeler semi push back. Like he's pushing back, but like in a very weak way in a way it's like if you're innocent wouldn't you be screaming more wouldn't you be a little bit more upset Mm -hmm. i would or wouldn't your explanation kind of just be a little more straightforward and check out like if it was as simple as yeah i went to take a selfie with somebody she had one of those like open shirts i didn't realize it so i touched her bare back yeah and then moved my hand like onto you know the shoulder or something and and took a picture or whatever but he says like it it was six inches under the shirt and it's like what what does that mean yeah like so, yeah, uh, it's strange. So when he refers to it as a mania, like, those guys aren't... I, 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 the, the, again, Brian, Ryan Seacrest got accused. He, he's, he didn't get fired or he didn't quit, so he's getting due process, it seems like, right? Mm-hmm. It seems like Soda Garrison Keeler have due process. Nobody even knew about this. It, they kept it quiet, and they did an investigation. So I would like to hear more from Garrison Keeler on this. Uh, I have a feeling we probably won't. Okay, so I I was reading on Ryan Seacrest because you're right. like, what's what's that? So the woman who was accusing him, a stylist, I guess. A she, wardrobe person, And right? she was accusing him, uh, yes. And so he said, no, absolutely not. She won, uh, I think, what was that, upwards of $15 million. She won $15 million. The lawyer countered and said, okay, we'll take seven figures instead. They said, forget it. We don't want to do that. And they in the article they they highlight, and this is from TMZ, uh, it said to the, something to the effect that um, it appears the statute of limitations, both civilly and criminally, would have run out on all of her claims, which are older than six years. As a result, the only leverage in getting money would be making allegations public and embarrassing him. Oh, okay. So that's that's just one source that I was able okay. to read about. But you know about Garrison Keeler, I, I just feel like that the this just this last uh, you know phrase where he says, "I feel awfully lucky to have hung on for so long." So like this is such an unfair environment for a guy like me to be working in. It's amazing I lasted. They're like, "What the fuck are you talking?" Exactly. About? Like, what is he talking about? Yes. And so when I read this, where it says. Um, that you know, the time would have run out like five, you know, six years, right? So, how recent was this experience with this woman that Garrison, uh, Garrison Keeler had? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this uh, had to be a recent within recent. the last right. several years because he's pretty clear on who it is. Mm-hmm. I wish someone would resist it. So, this thing about he said he's the one who's saying this right here. I wish someone would resist it. Why don't you? Why don't you read? Why don't you say no? I'm not standing for this and and. Counter sue. Why don't you counter sue for wrongful termination? Now let's have this out in open court. Like that would be you, Garrison, Mr. Fucking guy who has all the resources in the world. Probably knows all the top lawyers in the country. Why don't you do it? Is it so that's why this doesn't pass my smell test. Mm-hmm. If you want someone to stand up to it and resist it, you do it. And the fact that Al Franken isn't saying what you're saying. Why doesn't he say what you're saying? So, uh, what? What? Any conclusions on that? I don't know. I have a, I, my conclusions is this. Well, you know, Jimmy, is Garrison Keeler's being way too uh, cute. Yes, he's being way too cute right here. And and I have to take. You know, I don't get offended. Uh, That often, but when I see somebody say, "I think the country is in the grip of a mania," I I just think that's baloney. I I think you know we have to really take a a step back and look at what we're doing in our country, and if these people who happen to be men in positions of power are all taking advantage in really nefarious ways, you know that. That uh, what you call it? What, what's his name uh, f- with the button? <laughs> Matt Lauer. What, that Matt Lauer has a button under his desk 
to be able to behave in whatever manner he wishes to behave behind a locked door is so scary and so absurd. It's like something that you would never believe. Mm -hmm. You would never believe that somebody was doing this. This is awful, and I don't under I I don't think we're in the grip of mania, Keeler. Right. If what what we're in the grip of a reckoning, mm -hmm. I think is what's happening. And because again, like I said, the the only person I've heard to even slightly say this isn't true, uh, who's been fired for something for this, is Garrison Keeler. Have you heard anyone else? Because that's been fired for this, say that they shouldn't have been? No, I haven't. They always like, yep, I did it, and I'll try to, I'm going to... Has Why Charlie would... Rose come out with any no. kind of statement saying, gosh, ooh? No, he did it, and same thing with Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer came out with a statement, but you know, he's just apologizing statement, that's all. Yeah, Not this is good a... enough, Matt. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's, he's going to go take his $100 million. He, he's, he's Gazillion, he's loaded. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, this isn't a mania. This is like an evolution of things that it's like, yeah, we're yeah. not going to accept this anymore. This is an acceptable behavior. Right. So, and God, again, Garrison, you have all the resources in the world. Everyone, you're in the most, one of the most connected guys. And again, all of public radio, I'm sure. By the way, the head of the NPR just had to step down. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? Yep. Look at that. So it's a wreck. So why would that guy, again... Why would that guy step down if it wasn't true? So if it's not true, you would fight it, I, I think. So, care uh, Garrison, do 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 better, do better. Hey, thanks for watching. The make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you get a notice when we do a video. And our next live show is December fourth. Jank Uger, Jank Uger just added to that live show. That will be a fun show. Interesting links for tickets right there. December 4th, that's a Monday. We're in Burbank, California at Flappers Comedy Club. We'll see you then.